Have you ever wondered what makes you aware of yourself and the world around you? This is a riddle that has puzzled philosophers and scientists for centuries. The enigma of consciousness. Consciousness, in its simplest form, is a state of awareness. It's the ability to perceive, to feel, to think. It's the sensation of the warm sun on your face, the sharp taste of a lemon, the memory of a childhood holiday. It's the internal dialogue that narrates your life. This phenomenon, this consciousness is thought to be a product of the brain. Yet, despite centuries of probing and pondering, the exact mechanism remains elusive. It's like trying to catch a shadow. You can see it, you can even describe it, but you can't quite grasp it. So, the question remains, how does the brain generate consciousness? To understand consciousness, we first need to understand the brain. The brain is a complex network of billions of neurons, each communicating with thousands of others. Imagine a bustling city, each neuron a citizen participating in a ceaseless exchange of information, shaping the very fabric of the metropolis, the brain. Now let's delve into the role of these neurons. They are the fundamental units of the brain, the conductors of our neural symphony. Each neuron is capable of receiving and transmitting signals, akin to a two-way radio station, sending and receiving messages in the form of electrical and chemical signals. When a neuron receives a signal, it generates an electrical pulse, known as an action potential. This pulse travels down the neuron's axon, triggering the release of chemicals called neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters cross a small gap called a synapse, reaching neighboring neurons and passing on the message. Imagine a domino effect where one neuron's action potential sets off a chain reaction, cascading through the vast network of neurons. This intricate dance of signals is happening in your brain right now as you're listening to this, allowing you to process and understand these words. But here's the conundrum. We understand these basic functions, we know how neurons communicate, how they form networks, and how these networks process and transmit information. Yet this knowledge doesn't provide a clear picture of how these processes result in consciousness. It's akin to understanding the notes and rhythm of a song, but not grasping the emotion it evokes, the story it tells. We can map out every neuron, every synapse, every neurotransmitter, but the emergent property of consciousness remains elusive. It's as if we have all the pieces of a puzzle, but we're unsure of how they fit together to create the final image. So despite knowing how neurons work, we're still left with the question, how does this create consciousness? There are several theories that attempt to explain consciousness. Let's delve into a few of the most prominent ones. First up is the Integrated Information Theory, or IIT. Developed by Giulio Tononi, a neuroscientist, this theory suggests that consciousness arises from the brain's ability to integrate information. In other words, the brain is a complex network of interconnected neurons, and the way these neurons interact and share information gives rise to our conscious experience. The more interconnected the neurons, the higher the level of consciousness. According to IIT, even simple systems like a thermostat could possess a rudimentary form of consciousness due to their ability to process and integrate information. Then we have the global workspace theory, proposed by cognitive psychologist Bernard Bars. This theory likens the brain to a theater, with consciousness being the spotlight that illuminates certain performances while leaving others in the dark. In the grand theater of our minds, different parts of the brain are like actors on a stage, broadcasting information to each other. The information that gets the most attention, that is broadcast most widely, becomes our conscious experience. Another theory worth mentioning is the quantum consciousness theory, by physicist Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff. This theory proposes that consciousness is the result of quantum physics occurring within the neurons of our brain. According to this theory, consciousness is not a product of computational processes but rather, a fundamental feature of the universe. Lastly there is the panpsychism theory which suggests that consciousness is a fundamental aspect of reality, much like space and time. It proposes that all matter, even the smallest particles, have a basic form of consciousness. While these theories provide some insight, the ultimate question of how the brain generates consciousness remains a mystery. Perhaps one day with further research we will finally unravel this enigma.